we shall commence this module by understanding the international monetary system an international monetary system defines the rules customs instruments instructions for managing international payments the system defines the exchange rate regime to be followed in the world the world has a history of different monetary arrangements significant being the two the gold standard and the breton woods however both collapsed giving way to the floating exchange regime the timeline below provides an overview of how changes took place over time 1880 gold standard started operating the gold standard act committed united states to maintain a fixed exchange rate in relation to other countries pegged to gold 1914 to 1919 gold standard was suspended by several countries during the world war 1 1919 to 25 world operated on fluctuating rates 1925 great britain returns to a gold standard 1931 great britain abandons the gold standard owing to great depression 1931 to 40 monetary nationalism world war 2 1945 A meeting at the Bretton Woods established a gold exchange standards and two new international organizations the International Monetary Fund IMF and the World Bank 1971 US President Nixon ends the dollar's link to gold established under Bretton's Wood Agreement the world moved on to a system of floating rates and capital market liberalization in this module we will try to understand the reasons behind the demise of two major agreements that is the gold standards and the bretton wood after studying this module you shall be able to know the history of international monetary system learn how exchange rates were set using the monetary arrangements identify the problems with the previous arrangements evaluate the cost and benefits of all the institutions and arrangements analyze the role of government in facilitating this change from one system to another let us now discuss the gold standard the gold standard period was between 1870 to 1914 One major reason why gold standard was in place was because of the use of gold coins as a medium of exchange, store of value and unit of account. Gold has been used in this way since the ancient times, but the gold standards as a measure and a system was acknowledged as a legal institution from 1819 when the british parliament repealed long standing restriction on the export of gold coins and bullions from britain germany japan and other countries adopted the gold standards as well later in the 19th century during the gold standard a country's monetary supply was backed by gold the primary responsibility of a central bank was to preserve official parity between its currency and gold and to maintain this price the central bank needed a sufficient stock of gold reserves because international reserves were in the form of gold in this period any balance of payment deficit or surplus had to be financed by gold shipments between central banks so any imbalance was adjusted by the inflow or outflow of gold this adjustment mechanism was explained as the price peaky flow mechanism by hume the mechanism works as follows continuous favorable trade balance would result into the following equation of exchange implicit inflow of gold raises the domestic prices higher prices made imports attractive 
domestic goods unattractive and therefore more difficult to export. Thus, the selling dear and buying cheap tends to increase imports and decrease exports which in turn creates an unfavorable balance of trade against a country. To pay for this unfavorable balance of trade, the country loses speaky. Because of the speaky flow mechanism, a long-term surplus cannot exist. Hence, if there is a deficit in the nation, there will lead to outflow of gold. Similarly, a surplus in BOP position will have gold inflow into the country. Cost and benefits of gold standard. The gold standard works on an automatic adjustment mechanism which corrects the balance of payment. However, it was hard to believe how small gold movements could produce such effective adjustments in balance of payments. The role of gold in correcting BOP position was looked with doubts. The limited physical supply of gold helps to restrict a government's ability to inflate the money supply and hence limit inflation too. This leads to price stability. The gold standard also helps in managing government deficit spending as it limits the amount of debt that can be issued. Some believe that the length of the Great Depression increased due to the gold standards as it forced the central banks to keep monetary policy too tight creating deflation. Monetary policy would depend largely on the rate of gold production. Gold standard reduces the volatility by keeping exchange rate fixed within the narrow limits. Moving on to discuss the collapse of gold standards. The gold standard was a full-fledged gold coin standard where the value was set by the fixed weight of gold. But it was abandoned in 1914 with the beginning of the First World War. Some countries operated with some or the other form of it but it was officially suspended with the outbreak of the war. The uneven magnitude of inflation in different countries during the war distorted the equilibrium. However, after the end of First World War, attempts were made to restore to the gold standard. Between 1919 and 1925, the many countries allowed their exchange rates to float freely in the foreign exchange markets. In 1925, UK re-established the convertibility of pound into gold and got back on the gold standard. Other nations followed the route and got back too. The new system, however, never functioned smoothly. UK had lost its competitiveness and paying for the war created a huge BOP deficit. Attempts to correct the deficit led to deflation in UK. But the problem became worse when France decided to settle all its BOP surpluses with the gold. UK was forced to suspend the convertibility of gold, devalue the pound and hence the gold exchange standard came to an end in 1931. With this, the onset of Great Depression led to the suspension of gold standard by many nations. 1930 decade was a difficult period till 1944 when Bretton Woods system came. Till then, there was no international monetary arrangement in the place. Next, we shall discuss the Bretton Woods system. After the First World War, there were three competitive devaluations. Various nations planned to fix the exchange rate and keep it stable. To formulate new policies, representatives from 44 countries met at the Bretton Woods in USA in 1944. This led to the establishment of IMF and the World Bank then it was known as IBRD, International Bank for Reconstruction and Development. This system replaced the gold standard and established a parity for each currency in terms of both US dollar and gold. It also moved towards the adjustable exchange rate system 
which can be adjusted from time to time when required. From 1945 to 1970, the world was on a dollar standard and US dollar was the key currency. The power was shifted to USA politically, economically and militarily. This is the reason the new international monetary system reflected the plan of American delegation made by Harry White. Evolution of Bretton Woods system Bretton Woods system developed a method which delinked the effect of money supply on balance of payments. For this, it was required to reduce the role of gold in determining a nation's money supply. So the currencies were linked to something other than gold. It was decided to fix the price of gold in terms of US dollars and all other currencies were fixed in terms of US dollars. The price of gold was fixed as $35 per ounce and US was committed to exchange dollars for gold without any restrictions or limitations. Other nations were expected to keep their exchange rates within 1% of the par value. Within this band, exchange rates were decided by the forces of demand and supply. Since the band was decided by the dollar value and the dollar value was fixed to a specific weight, the system was considered to be stable. The important which feature of the past which led to the bread and word system were as follows. The floating rates of 1930 discouraged the trade and investment and encouraged the competitive depreciation. However, at the same time, nations were reluctant to return to the permanently fixed rates on the model of the classical gold standard of the 19th century. Hence, a compromise was sought between the polar alternatives of either freely floating or fixed rates and what emerged was the adjustable peg system. The nations were required to restrict the exchange rate fluctuations within a band 1% above or below the parity. There were questions on monetary policy reserves. Two views came forward, one by the Keynes which proposed something akin to the World Central Bank which can create reserves at will and other proposed by the White was the limited borrowing mechanism. As we know dollar was the reserve currency, USA was giving preference to IMF with SDR, quotes and subscriptions emerged. Nations wanted to avoid the same kind of crisis that occurred before. Hence nations wanted some kind of binding framework and IMF navigated the route for the nations. Nations felt that there was a need for an institutional forum for international cooperation on the monetary matters. The matters became worse during the interwar years because of the absence of a forum which was coordinate matter between all and hence could be avoided. With IMF and one third of the IMF quotas at the outset, the United States assured itself an effective veto over future decision making. Operation After the Second World War, almost every economy had imposed strict controls on trade because of which it was not until 1958 that the Bretton Woods system began to operate as had been designed. Central banks were encouraged not to devalue their currency unless in the event of a fundamental disequilibrium and then the devaluation could only take place in consultation with the IMF. In 1949, a group of 24 countries devalued their currencies against US dollar which improved their trade balance position with US and by 1958, US began to have a BOP deficit. However, exchange rate adjustments among the major currencies became less frequent over time. In 1950s and 1960s, major European countries and Japan used the capital controls to maintain undervalued exchange rate against the US dollar in pursuit of export-led growth. But this led to the widening of deficit and became a cause of concern. United States ran balance of payment deficits supplying dollar liquidity to the rest of the world and played the role of the world banker. Few countries started asking for gold and gold stock steadily declined. The other sources of gold were not contributing much. The output of new gold was held at fixed price 
of $35 per ounce which was kept unchanged at since 1934. The private demand increased the price temporarily but US announced that it would buy and sell at $35 per ounce only and from central banks and monetary authorities only. Let us now discuss the collapse of Bretton Woods system. The system of fixed parities made it difficult for the economies to achieve external and internal balance simultaneously without discrete exchange rate adjustments. The story of the breakdown of the Bretton Woods is the story of unsuccessful attempts to reconcile the internal and external balance under its rules. 1945 to 49, US ran a BOP surplus and helped the European reconstruction after the Second World War. 1950, BOP turned deficit as discussed in the previous section, however, the deficits remained small. Japan and Europe built up their reserves and there was a dollar shortage in the world. US stood ready to buy and sell gold at $35 per ounce and it was the currency used for any international transactions. 1958, US BOP deficits widened. This was supplemented by the capital outflows mostly to Europe and the high inflation rate due to the excess money creation during the war with Vietnam. Many economists view the macroeconomic policy package of the US 1965 to 68 as a major blunder that helped unravel the system of fixed exchange rates. The creation of the two-tire market was a turning point for the Bretton Woods system. The US economy entered a recession in 1970 and as unemployment rose, markets became increasingly convinced that soon the dollar would be devaluated against all the major European countries. Because dollar was the official currency, US could not devalue it to correct its BOP deficit. Whereas other policies could not correct it completely. US kept short term interest rates high to prevent the capital outflows and intervened in the foreign exchange market to support dollar by selling strong currencies. US also encouraged its exports, tightened its fiscal policy. These all measures were met with little success. As US deficit widened, Gold reserves began to decline and foreign held dollar reserves were greater than the US held gold reserves. The difference between the two kept increasing and reached about four times in 1970. US asked surplus nations like the European countries and Japan to revalue their currencies and it was prominent that dollar will be devalued in the recent future. Capital outflows increased further to stronger economies like Germany and Japan. Finally, US President Nixon suspended the convertibility of dollars into gold. The US devalued its dollar which led to the collapse of the Bretton Woods system. It is said that US paid a heavy price for being the international reserve currency though dollar remained the international currency even after the collapse of Bretton Woods. The world after the collapse moved to the system of floating rates. Let us briefly look into the changing role of International Bank for Reconstruction and Development. Established in 1944, IBRD is basically an international financial institution in order to fund the middle income developing countries. It was set up with the objective of financing the reconstruction of European nations distressed after the Second World War. Following the reconstruction of Europe, the bank's mandate expanded to advancing global economic development and eradicating poverty. The IBRD makes available commercial grade or concessional financing to independent states to finance projects that aim to make a progress in transportation and infrastructure, education, domestic policy, environmental awareness, 
energy investments, health care, access to food and access to improved sanitation. The IBRD is owned and governed by its member countries but it has its own managerial leadership and staff that carries out its regular business operations. The bank's member governments are the shareholders which contribute paid in capital and have the right to vote on its matters. In addition to contributions from its member nations, the IBRD acquires most of its capital by borrowing on international capital markets through issuing bonds. In 2011, it raised 29 billion US dollar in capital from bonds issues made in 26 different currencies. The bank offers a number of financial services and products including flexible loans, grants, risk guarantees, financial derivatives and calamitous risk financing. Now we will summarize what we have studied in this module. An international monetary system defines the rules, customs, instruments, instructions for managing international payments and defines the exchange rate regime to be followed in the world. Next, the international monetary system has moved through various phases from gold standard to present floating rates regime. Next, under the gold standard, each nation defined its currency in terms of gold content. The gold content is one unit of currency was fixed and the nation stands ready to buy and sell any amount of gold at that time. Next, most countries adopted the gold standard till the First World War. Next, after the First World War, there were several changes. Various nations planned to fix the exchange rate and keep it stable. To formulate new policies, representatives from 44 countries met at Bretton Woods in USA in 1944. The meeting at Bretton Woods replaced the gold standard and established a parity for each currency in terms of both US dollar and gold. It also moves toward adjustable exchange rate system which can be adjusted from time to time when required. It also led to the establishment of International Monetary Fund known as IMF and the World Bank. US dollar was made the international reserve currency where US stands ready to buy and sell gold into dollars and all international transactions were done in dollars. Next, the Bretton Woods arrangement finally collapsed in 1971 when US was forced to devalue its dollar due to continuous widening BOP deficits. The collapse of Bretton Woods gave way to the floating exchange rate regime.